Childhood obesity is a topic that is very near and dear to my heart. Um, I was a obese child growing up. Um, you know, the buzzwords around bullying now in schools and we see the lasting effects that that can have. That's very real situations for a lot of kids around the country. I mean, the United States has one of the highest childhood obesity rates in the world. The CDC said in 2012 that we have a generation of children that will not outlive their parents. Their parents. That's, that's, that's something that's unheard of in the United States. Our, our culture is about being better than the generation before you, living better, being able to provide better, having more education, having a higher quality of life. And to me, it's, it's something that's completely preventable. It's absolutely 100% preventable. And this is when parents need to step up. Parents need to step up and to understand what they're bringing in the house. And that's where we come in. We help parents understand. We give them the tools that they need to navigate not only the grocery store, but a child's actual activity level. You know, you have to make fitness fun for a child. If you're not making fitness fun for a child, one, they're not going to develop a good habit. They're not going to like it. They're going to automatically think it's something they have to do, like homework or doing some sort of a chore around the house. Fitness for a child should be something part of their everyday lifestyle. It shouldn't be something that's like homework or a chore that has to be done. And children learn a lot by watching their parents. The key is, is that parents need the right tools. Parents need to understand nutritional values for children. They're not the same as nutritional values for adults. You know, we say you can't feed little bodies like you feed big bodies. You also can't train little bodies like you train big bodies. Children need to learn at a very young age that fitness is part of their lifestyle. So it's not a, a chore that they have to do or um, like doing homework or, or, or cleaning their room. It becomes something that's a part of them that they want to do. Chronic diseases and childhood obesity are things that are preventable. Chronic diseases, especially in children, are preventable. Type 2 diabetes. Kids having cardiovascular disease, who ever heard of a child having cardiovascular disease at the age of 12? It was unheard of 30 years ago, but now it's something that doctors are starting to see. That needs to stop. You know, having preventable diseases like diabetes, like childhood obesity in general, it goes back to breaking the cycle. Breaking the cycle of McDonald's because I'm so busy that I'm rushing from work to soccer practice. It's the only thing that's on the way. Well, there's other alternatives. There's, there's packing healthy snacks. There's making better choices. There's, yes, maybe planning ahead of time. You know, there's, there's choices and there's, there's cycles that need to be broken like the PlayStation, right? Or, you know, in my generation, it was Nintendo. But still, in my generation, we, we got up and we moved a little. Now... Kids go to classrooms in school. They sit for the majority of the day. Most PE classes have been taken out of curriculums in public schools in the United States. And then they come home. And they come home and the typical American child is going to sit and either watch TV or play a game. Something has to be done about this. This is where Define comes in. We give parents the tools and the resources to be able to work with their child, make better decisions, give them the knowledge. Knowledge is power. And when we're talking about the future of not only our country, but our world in general, it deserves that attention. To have fitness become a lifestyle for a child is a choice in the beginning. But making that behavior pattern that will eventually grow to that lifestyle is something that a child will take with them for their entire life and the ripples that will go beyond that. The ripples of their children or their grandchildren or their great-grandchildren, those values that you're passing on of leading a healthy lifestyle. I'm absolutely passionate about childhood obesity. This is something that we can do something about. This is something that is preventable. This is something that is simply a convenience. It's, it's, it's a disease of convenience uh, is, is what it's become in the United States because everything has come more important than nutrition or, or fitness. It absolutely amazes me that parents will agonize over what activities a child is in. They're in piano and ballet and tap and um, you know, they're worried about, are they in the math league? Um, what preschool are they going to? What high school are they attending? Are they going to a preparatory school? Oh my goodness, what, are, what college are they going to go to? What are their SATs? What are their ACTs? And they, 
they agonize over all these decisions, but at the very basic level, they're not giving them proper nutrition and, and, and instilling fitness into their life. And that's something that, that is, that's something that needs to stop. And that's something that parents have the power to do. Childhood obesity isn't just a topic that Define is choosing to tackle because it's an epidemic in the United States. It's a topic that's truly near and dear to my heart. You know, one of the things I remember most about growing up as, as an obese child was back to school shopping. You know, most of the time that is like the prime time, let's get new shoes, we're gonna get new jeans and shirts and you know, kids typically really like that time of the year and I dreaded it. I dreaded it one because of all the ridicule and bullying I faced all through um, all through school, really, uh, even through high school. But really, it was the back to school shopping. So you, you have to understand that I was a very chubby child and um, you know, I couldn't just go shopping anywhere. And I remember the realization, um, oh, I remember the realization um, one particular back to school year that um, I couldn't buy clothes in the regular store. And there was a store <laughs> in a local mall called Lane Bryant. I had never heard of that store before and many people now know it. But um, it's essentially a store that sold clothes for larger women. And they started at size 14, I believe. That was really hard because not only did you know that you weren't going to fit into the latest fashions, you weren't going to fit into what other people were wearing, and you knew that that ridicule was going to come. But it was a realization that I can't shop at a normal store, and that is immense. Uh, it's a child that's immense. And even though it's an outward characteristic of, oh, I want to you know, physically have a certain pair of jeans or a certain shirt or, or what have you. It's, it's about more than that because when you're a child, school and high school and junior high, if any parent remembers, is, um, it's one of the most difficult times that a child can go through and it's one of the most judgmental times. And so one of the reasons I'm so passionate about childhood obesity and, and, and that it's so preventable is because if there's one child that we can stop to go through that humiliation, to go through that, that feeling of dread that the first day of school is coming or um, you know an event at the school is coming or even something like a band uniform or um, you know some sort of a, a, a choir uniform or, or something of that nature if the child isn't active in sports, that's huge, that's magnified, that's something that parents need to understand is very real. As much as it's superficial, at that point of a person's life, it's very real. And those scars are, are very real. And um, if we can prevent that, I know we can prevent that. Um, if, a, if a parent chooses to contact us, that's, that's something that they can prevent. And I don't think that there's a parent in the world that wouldn't want to do that. I was working with a new client and whenever we work with our clients, we always talk about what motivation you have to have. And it can't just be a pant size or a dress size or something or pounds because when the weeks get really hard, you simply need something more. And I asked her to dig deeper and I asked her to say, you know, what really is important? Really, why are you doing this? You know, and it took about a week and she thought about it and she came back and she goes, I need to do this for my kids. My kids are seeing their mother go to McDonald's. My kids are seeing their mother sit on the couch and eat ice cream and eat Doritos. And that's what they're eating. And I see my children getting bigger. And one of her kids was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes um, a, you know, a couple months prior to that. And I think it really hit home for her that she's the one that was setting the standard. She's the one that was setting the example. Children are a product of what they see, what their environment is. And it really dawned on her. And when, when the epiphany came for her that fitness and nutrition could really make that much of a difference, um, that became her true motivation. 
And that's the tools and the knowledge that every parent needs. And that's what Define can give them. They can give them the tools and the knowledge to be able to make better nutritional choices and to show their kids how fitness can be fun. Uh, no child wants something else to do like homework or clean their room. But if you make it fun and you make it part of their daily life and this is just something that we do as a family, it's amazing, amazing things can happen. You know, at Define, we always talk about how the small changes make the biggest difference. And that's exactly what childhood obesity is. Childhood obesity is about very small steps that start to make very large impacts. In the United States, we have become a culture of convenience. But what parents need to understand and what we can help show them is that convenience can still be healthy. There are hundreds of products that are out there specifically designed for children to meet children's nutritional needs that taste good, that have cute little characters on them, but they're nutritionally dense. They have the DHA fats, they have the fibers, they have the macro and the micronutrients, they have the true density that a child needs to grow. One of the biggest obstacles that I hear all the time from parents is, well, yes, but you know, is it affordable? How am I gonna be able to make all these changes and, and still be able to stay within my budget? It's absolutely possible. That's one of the things that we show parents. Just because you're eating healthy does not mean that you have to go broke. It does not mean that you have to make a choice between you know, paying the rent and you know, going grocery shopping. That's not what this is about. This is about long-term health. It's simple, very easy substitutions that can be made that can drastically increase the nutritional density. And quite frankly, one of the things that we show parents, and, and nobody ever believes me until we go through this exercise, but how do you eat clean and healthy for under $30 a week? And nobody ever believes me. And then we go through the example, and they're like, oh my God. <laughs> and the light bulbs go off, and, and, and all of a sudden, it isn't just about the dollar menu or the value menu going through a fast food location. You know, it's about understanding that you might not be feeding your child as much food, but that's because they're getting full off the food. The food actually has nutritional value to it. So a lot of times you'll end up spending less just because you're not buying as much, which is an epiphany for most parents as well. And when you get that beautiful relationship between this is affordable, oh, it is convenient, oh, and I'm giving my child what his or her body needs to grow and to develop and to bloom and to aspire and to become their hopes and their dreams, that is amazing, that is beautiful, that is what this is all about. Childhood obesity does not have to exist in the United States. It does not have to be more prevalent in one culture versus another. It does not have to be more prevalent in economically deprived areas of the United States. The tools, the knowledge, the resources, that's the value. That's the true value that Define can bring. I encourage parents to reach out. You don't want to be the parent in 20 years that your son or daughter has a heart attack or your son or daughter has cardiovascular disease or has to have a stent put in or simply can't move and can't function, can't live. There's a difference between existing and living. And you only get to live once. And we should be giving our children every benefit that we can. We should be equipping them with the knowledge and the tools as much as reading and math and science and the arts and cultural improvements and cultural development of our children is important. It is also important that we give them the tools to take care of the only in one body that they have. Life isn't a dress rehearsal. We get one trip around to do this and we owe it to our children to give them these tools, to give them this knowledge, to equip them so that they have it and that they can pass it on. Thank you.